Hello friend, Henry Flowers here. Forgiveness. As believers in Jesus Christ, forgiveness should be something that we live. Something that we give freely. Why? Because it was freely given to us. And I'm finding that more and more, this is the thing that we don't want to do almost more than anything else. We don't want to forgive. We want to hold grudges and we want to be mad at people and we want to give people a silent treatment and, and to the people we love the most, people that you say you love the most, you give them the cold shoulder. You do it to your spouse. We do it to our siblings, man. We do it to our parents. Let somebody do something that we don't like. We quick to not answer their phone calls, not respond to their texts, give them the colder treatment, deny your spouse, you deny them sex, or oh, you got a headache now because you're mad because of something they said a couple of days ago. God gonna get you for that. God don't like ugly. And that's why people have so many problems with you're not bearing any fruit. There's nobody coming to Christ as a result of, of, of your work, your impact in their life, because we don't model sometimes. We don't model the faith. Forgiveness. It should be an open book, something that's flowing constantly. Christians should be the first to forgive and not the first to hold a grudge. Something happened Saturday and I said to a, a, a newer friend of mine, he, had, he and I hadn't been friends for very long, but uh, I said something to him that I believe in my heart after looking back could have been offensive to him. Now, I spent Saturday calling him, I spent Sunday calling him, and I finally ended up, I sent him a text message today and I said, hey, I owe you an apology I won't do it via text, so please call me when you can. Now, I hope that something has happened that has kept him away from his phone or, you know, maybe he lost his phone or whatever. That's a legit reason why he hasn't responded to me. I, I hope that's the case. Because if it's not the case, when he calls me or if he calls me or the next time I see him, I'm going to apologize to him. Hey, what I said to you could have come across as offensive. I deeply apologize. It was not my intention. Here's what I intended. Do you forgive me? I hope you do. I hope he forgives me. Now, if he forgives me and things get made right, I will ask him another question. I will ask him a question about why um, I wasn't able to get in touch with him this weekend. And I will ask him about why my texts weren't responded to. If it was that he was giving me the cold shoulder and avoiding me because he was angry, let me tell you something. I'm coming for him. I'm coming for him. And I am going to call him to action to be better than he is. You know why? Because he claims to be a believer. This guy, we, 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 he leads with his faith. And I'll just leave it at that. He leads with it. And here you are, if it turns out that he was avoiding me and giving me the cold shoulder, I'm coming for him. Because Christ has called us to be better. And we wonder why there ain't no more people in the body of Christ than there are. They're wonder, and we wonder why there's so many people who've got constant things to say about us as believers uh, and calling us hypocrites and these kinds of things. I'm coming for him. And I'm going to call him to do better and to be better and to reach toward that powerful life that most of us say we want, that Christ said we can have, but we don't live it because we too many times don't model what we say we believe. Friend, listen, I'm dealing with these issues. I want to help you and I want to help myself be better because we owe it to him to be better. Subscribe, share this video and wait for more. I'm coming back. I ain't done.